Hello, America. Welcome to the Marriage Reboot Show, hosted by Herb and Lily. Tom- there it is. We really got it. Blessed us. Really changed some things in our marriage. We we definitely yes. have Just fine. set Thank new you. priorities. We've definitely stepped up our communication, the way that we come to decisions together, and have gotten away from the independent thinking and making more mutual decisions. How to sort out feelings and have those difficult conversations but still coming, meeting some middle ground at the end of it. And parenting definitely coming together more and having an objective Uh and a goal with which we want to continue to raise Nevaeh, our our five-year-old, in has really brought us closer and going to bed and waking up, as I feel like almost every couple has mentioned, making a point to be on thank you. Uh, you, Luli, and Herb for this opportunity and accepting us into the academy. I thank my husband for, for being on board from day one. And definitely would recommend, if I have the opportunity, to recommend this to other Christian couples because they definitely will come out better. Hello, America. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Hi, it's Herb and Luli Thomas with <laughs> Marriage Reboot Academy. We live in Dallas, Texas, and we've been married be 48 years in on january 30th yeah it's, it's uh, not long yeah and we Almost have 40, 48 we have three sons three beautiful daughters in love and eight grandchildren ranging in age from five months old to 11 years of age mm. and we're so excited that you joined us um uh, herb you want to get us started well, today's topic is going to be about the Academy, about the Christian Marriage Reboot Academy. Uh, first of all, why did we create it? And second of all, what exactly is it? So I thought I would start off with uh, answering 13 questions that you have. Um, uh, actually, some of those we're going to ask back to you uh, about this that will help explain this. So I'm going to have Luli read the questions off and then I'm going to answer them. Okay, Okay. so why don't we start with question number one. All right, so Herb, why did we create the Christian Marriage Reboot Academy, and what is the Christian Marriage Reboot Academy? Okay, so as a background, God created you, your spouse, your children, marriage, and your family. Then God created a standard for this marriage, and he designed the family to be a network of, between the Lord Jesus Christ, the husband, wife, and the children as relationships. And so he created uh, nine essentials that must function as both behaviors and activities um, among that those relationships for them to live. Um, so let's move on to that's that's the background. So what is the next question? Okay. So now what you may be doing, you may be saying, well, how do, what difference does this make for me? Uh, we've had many people that we've talked with that have been married for years and they thought, well, we're doing okay. So mm-hmm. her, Good how question. is it relevant? Well, 98% of the U S population is not applying God's standard uh, for the family. Okay. These families are actually dying from the cancer of sin. And okay, so then uh, our question for you is, are you applying God's standard to your family and your marriage? And are you applying the nine essentials in your family at the same time? Now, you may say, what are the nine essentials? Herb's going to kind of walk you through that. That's later. Okay. So if you answered no, then your family is on the path to death sooner or later. It's a hard thing to know, but you, it's important for you to understand the impact of the cancer of sin of selfishness has had on your marriage since the moment of your wedding and the path that you're on. Um, the One of the reasons is that the sin of selfishness has been aggressively spreading as a cancer since your wedding, causing withdrawal, and you probably all know this, withdrawal, isolation, depression, independence into separate lives that ultimately end in the death of your family. You probably have seen some of that if you're early in your marriage. You're definitely seeing more of that as as time goes on. So we're going to talk about more about that uh, later. 
Okay, so now, how bad has the problem gotten? Okay, the problem, and this is one of the reasons we got into this, is that statistics show that 98% of the U.S. population rejects God's standard for marriage as either singles, non-Christians, or emotional divorcees, and only 2% of the U.S. population are applying God's standard and are surviving and thriving families. In fact, the average score for most U.S. families is zero essentials out of nine. Okay. Mm. okay. So, now, so why did you create the Christian Marriage Reboot, Reboot Academy? Well, because we are not aware of any Christian marriage repair ministry that applies all nine essentials continuously into the family. They promote only one of the nine essentials at a time, uh, which allows the path of the family death to continue. As a result, over the last 60 years, God's standard for in, in families it has dramatically declined from 72 percent to 2 percent. This cannot continue. Uh, so we constructed the only program that continuously injects all of the nine essentials into the family. So. Our question to you, we want you to slow down and we just want you to think about what Herb's been sharing. Are you in what category are you in? Are you in that 2 percent? More than likely, none of us are. So anyway, what would your score be if you were to stop and think about the nine essentials on uh, applying God's standard in the way you engage with your spouse and with your children? We're going to tell you what those non-essentials are later, but those non-essentials have to all function together at the same time as activities and behaviors in, in, those, in these relationships of the family for there to be life. Um, if your score is zero to eight, then your family will eventually die from the cancer of sin. It's inevitable. Statistics show it. Okay, so um, if they're in that category, right, what do we do? Okay, so the most important thing to do is if you've got this cancer that's growing, which is slowly moving you apart into independent lives, then how can you cure that? Um, you can, uh, the way to do that is to apply God's standard. To, the, to your family starting today. Uh, you, can, you, have, you, you must learn, practice, and apply all nine essentials and behaviors of both activities and behaviors from this day forward. In other words, to turn it around, you've got to have all of those nine functioning at the same time inside of your family to keep it from slowly disintegrating. So how where and when do we apply the nine essentials? Okay. Um, okay. What, what, what I want to get across is what is God's standard and what are all the nine essentials that must function all continuously at the same time? Okay. It's kind of a two step process. The first step is to, uh, to cure this, this cancer of selfishness. And that's really what we're talking about when the sin, it's selfishness, uh, is through administration of the chemotherapy of the gospel into each member of the family. How do we do this? If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you shall be saved. God redeemed man and woman from sin and death by sending his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to shed his perfect blood to cleanse us of our sin and make us righteous in God's eyes if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. We are a new person in Christ and no longer a slave to sin. First step. Second step to curing the cancer of selfishness is through the administration of proton therapy directly into the tumors of sin by applying nine essentials throughout through the Holy Spirit. All nine essentials, activities and behaviors must continuously function together at the same time for the family to live. If even one essential is missing, then the family will slowly die. If many of the non-essentials are missing, then death will come sooner. 
Okay, so here again, how, where, when, and do you apply the say nine essentials? Okay, now this can be done for free inside of your home and inside of your life. All you do is you just apply these. It can be done for free. Or you can do it with a community group in the Reboot Academy in which we provide to you the daily guidance, structure, socialization, accountability, and functioning of the non-essentials in your family for 42 days of training and practice so that you can, you, we, you create new healthy habits that continue through muscle memory uh, and, and uh, for the rest of your life and your family survives and thrives and you join the 2%. Okie doke. So, so you if, can do it or we can do it. Okie doke. <laughs> so if you were to join uh, the Christian Marriage Reboot Academy, describe exactly what that looks like. Okay. Before we do that, I want you to understand, first of all, that the Christian marriage, uh, this is this is formally the Christian Marriage Reboot Course, Inc., which is a Texas nonprofit Corporation qualified through the Internal Revenue Service as a 501c3 organization. So we're not trying to make profit off of you. And all we're trying to do is cover expenses. That, that I just wanted to let you know that ahead of time of who we are. Uh, so can you ask that question again? So if we join, describe exactly what the Reboot Academy is. Okay. The reboot, the reboot Academy is intentionally applying God's standard to your life, including the nine essentials, as follows. Okay. Um, around there, we're going to pick out six events during each day, and around those, we're going to apply three of the, of the nine essentials. Okay. Number one, we create two hours of family together time. Number two, we create two hours of husband and wife together time. And three, we create one hour of Christ and family together time. Those are the first three. Okay. Next okay. Question. So when you list out for these events, one of the things that people have so often said to us, we don't have time. Uh, we can't add anything into our schedule. We're already swamped. So with these six events around which three essentials are we scheduled and how does that work? Are we adding things in? Talk to me about that. Okay. Well, um, the, uh, first of all, as I go down what our recommended, uh, schedule would be because this is scheduled on an online shared calendar for the whole family so that they can all function together for these three, uh, which is the time elements. Um, Please understand that these are specific times I'm, we're recommending, but that doesn't mean that it's very flexible to fit your schedule so they can change. So this is uh, these are the six uh, events that we're scheduling around and the time for each. So first of all, devotionals in the morning, husband and wife, one half hour from six to six thirty. OK, number two, breakfast, which is hour and a half long, six thirty to eight thirty eight o'clock a.m. Then three, which is school, work, uh, daycare, is nine hours from eight to five. Okay, and this is all scheduled. Uh, number four is parenting and dinner from five to eight p.m. Then we have uh, the the uh, the fifth event, which is husband and wife time together, is two hours from eight to ten at night. It's just each night. Um, and then uh, six is sleeping in the same bed uh, for eight hours, 10 to six in the morning. OK, so what this is, is intentionally applying uh, qu quantity time uh, so that you are able to uh, replenish those relationships that are essentially being neglected at this point. OK, okay dope. So what? Uh, remaining of the six of the nine essentials, are you continuously applying throughout the day? The other six, these apply all day, every day. Um, and these are both activities and behaviors. Number one is forgive each other. Critical to be able to have a clean slate moving forward so that there's no anger 
uh, resentment toward each other, contempt or any uh, that is wiped out. Why? Because Christ says to. Uh, number two, agape love and serve each other. Have an attitude of serving each other all the time. Okay. Number three is mutual decisions where there are no independent decisions, no reluctant decisions. It's made jointly so that there is you move forward as one person. Uh, number four is renewing of the mind into the mind of Christ. So you start looking at things through Christ's eyes of how everything should work in this world and not through the world's eyes. Okay. And number five uh, of the essentials uh, is emotional, spiritual, and physical intimacy, especially in the area of sex, but in, in all areas and of emotional uh, 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 intimacy is so important. Uh, and so that's, that's, the entire time. That's your, both thinking and acting. Uh, and then the last one is trauma healing through the Lord Jesus Christ to, uh, for his love to overcome your fear. And that's a thing we'll talk about later. Those are, those are the, so that gives us nine essentials. So if anybody that's listening happens to be interested in joining the Christian Marriage Reboot Academy or just talking with someone and gathering more information, what do they do? Okay, uh, just so that you understand what we're talking about, we're talking about this is inside of your home, inside of your life. You're actually running this entire thing with the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Uh, and and so we, pr we provide a community group uh, to support you and encourage you throughout the week, um, and you meet on, on weekends, um, but with a schedule of applying God's standard and the nine essentials. If you want to be involved in something like that, rather than doing it yourself, if you would like to do it with us, with uh, then uh, you just uh, go to our website. It's at the top of the screen, as you can see. It's uh, uh, HTTPS colon two backslashes CHR marriage reboot dot org. Go there, get the upper right hand corner of the website. You'll see apply now, hit that, follow the prompts all the way through. And then you can sign up for that and we'll assign you to a community group. Um, if you need more information, feel free to email me, uh, Herb Thomas at hthomas at uh, chrmarriagereboot.org. Um, and we'll answer everything you want. We can, we'll talk to you on the phone uh, or we'll answer it by email, whatever you need to be able to feel comfortable and moving forward as a group in this. Could you please give the email again and speak it more slowly? Okay. Her, uh, H. Thomas at chrmarriagereboot.org. And so C as in Christian, H. No, it's C-H-R as in Christian. Oh, okay. C-H-R as in Christian, <laughs> your abbreviation. Then yeah. what's the next letter? The next word is marriage. Marriage. And then reboot. Reboot. Dot org. Dot org. Write it down. Is it up on the screen anywhere? Is it, it is in the comments? The very, it's the very top. Uh, no, no. The, the last part is that. Uh, so uh, the last part of the URL is up on the screen at the very top. Uh, for that email, you just put H. Thomas in front of at that. And that's my email. Okay. You do H. Thomas at, and then you do the URL. The URL that's up at the top of the page. Right okay. Here. Got it. All right, yeah, good right. deal. Okay, so um, in conclusion, before we move forward with the next yeah. thing. I guess my conclusion is I hope you now understand the danger that your family is in if you do nothing uh, and the need to apply God's standard and the nine essentials starting today. Okie doke. Now, is there anything else that will cure the cancer inside of my marriage and family no nope well right here it says yes oh, we've already gone over that oh okay well never <laughs> mind never mind we're all keeping, right we're keeping you on your toes <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're keeping ourselves on the toes uh, okay, okay so what's next uh next we're going to play a video uh by uh friends that have come gone through the academy with us and their comments about the Academy. 
So uh, let's start now with uh, the one with Lewis and Shanae uh, Moore from Hayward, California. Okie doke. This experience has really blessed us, really changed some things in our marriage. We, we definitely have set new priorities. We've definitely stepped up our communication, the way that we come to decisions together and have gotten away from the independent thinking and making more mutual decisions, how to sort out feelings and have those difficult conversations, but still coming, meeting some middle ground at the end of it. And parenting definitely coming together more and having an objective and a goal with which we want to continue to raise Nevea, our, our five-year-old in has really brought us closer and going to bed and waking up as I feel like almost every couple has mentioned, making a point to be on similar scale, a keyword being intentional, being intentional about adjusting the things that you can. Nothing in life that is is worth it has ever come easy to any of us. And so you have to be willing to make that sacrifice. You get out of it what you put in. And the more that you pour into the commitment, the greater reward that you will get. It renews the passion, renews the love within our marriage. And like I said, I really feel like we're coming out of this better than which we came in. So we truly thank uh, you, Lily and Herb, for this opportunity and accepting us into the academy. I thank my husband for for being on board from day one. And definitely would recommend if I have the opportunity to recommend this to other Christian couples because they definitely will come out better. Amazing for me because it had me assess myself as where I'm at as a husband. I'm able to not only go to this class being a man, but also go through this class with my wife. And as we went through this class for the last six weeks, not only I took a closer look at how I am as a husband, but I also asked myself, what can I do better? But taking this class, it made me come up with, I'm going to respect my wife, even though she's not in the room, I'm going to respect her heart. Because I always tell brothers that it's important for us to be Ephesian man, because we have to love Christ as much as he loved the church. But also my wife had to experience it. Re reboot, you're going to reboot your marriage. You're going to say, you say to yourself, there's some things I know I need to improve on. I know I need to get better. And if if she, I seen the transformation in Shanae, how her attitude has improved, how we able to have these quality conversations, but also keep Christ centered because we don't want to we don't want to be upset at one another. We want to yell. We want to we want to make sure that we are doing it and we're being an example for so many people. So taking this marriage ruby reboot has been a, a refreshing for me, and it's also put things in perspective for me because now. I know the importance of mutual decisions. Now I know the importance of transforming and renewing of my mind. Now I know the importance for us to come to the, and have these moments in which it's important for us to bond. So as I, as I said earlier, the, the three C's have just enhanced the communication, the commitment, and the compromise for us to be able to be the couple that I know we can be. And you taking a marriage reboot, it's going to help you reboot yourself. It's help you reboot your marriage. But it's going to help you be that ideal, ideal couple to the Christ because that's what he wants, because that's what he loved most, marriage. Welcome back. It's Herb and Luli with the boot. And you just listened to Shanae and Lewis Moore out of California, and they participated in the Marriage Reboot Academy course. And Herb, what were some of your takeaways of what they shared? Well, uh, <clears throat> uh I love the fact that they talked about how many areas that uh, it helped them in. It helped them in parenting. It helped them in setting goals. It, it uh, about being in the same bed at the same time. How, how important that was, and and to the, not only to them but the other uh, couples, and, and then also how intentional it was because you want to do things. You always have decided you want to do things to better your your marriage, but you're not intentional about it. Scheduling it does that, and. Um, and uh, how about Lewis? Anything that stood out about what he said? Uh, you know, I love the fact that he said that it made it made him want to be a better man and to respect his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought that was cool. And he just he he lauded uh, the Reboot Academy as really helping him with that. Uh, what do you think? Well, I loved um, he, and I'm going to use a word that Herb used. Shanae used the word intentional. Mm. <clears throat> That is the biggest thing that I think 
I know what to do. It's mm-hmm. not a matter of not knowing what to do, uh, but it's being intentional in doing it. And then I love the word she used that it unified them. It got them in sync. They were working toward the same thing together. And then I loved what Lewis said when he said we were able to have Christ-centered conversations. Mm. So often Mm. when things get off course, you're yelling at each other or you're withdrawing from each other. And the mutual decision process gives you the tool to come together and have a Christ-centered conversation working together toward the same goal. And it takes the emotion out of the conversation. So I liked that. And I love to, one more thing, what Lewis said. Okay. Um, I always love it. Lewis says he wants to be an Ephesians 5 man. If you don't know what that is, go read Ephesians 5, okay? But anyway, he said, I need to respect her heart. Mm -hmm. And women, it is all about our hearts. We process Mm -hmm. everything through our hearts. So it's not a matter of with a man, it may be respecting him. But with a woman, it is really respecting her heart and learning to know more about that heart so Mm -hmm. that you can cherish her heart and nurture her heart. So, loved it. Great. Let's move on to see the video of Mario and Cindy Marino, who are in Dallas, Texas. They're part of a Hispanic church and also a blended family. So I think it'll be great to hear their insights into the academy. You and Mario? We've learned so much from the program. it, it, there was a lot of changes, uh, great changes, because we were not used to like going to sleep together. Um, there was uh, times that, uh, you know, Mario would come in late. I was already asleep. Um, waking up early in the morning was also challenging for Mario. Um, and then um, the mutual decision <laughs> process. We had to use that one a lot. And we still we still are. <laughs> Was we're still in the making, <laughs> um, but uh, we loved it. We we loved every bit of it. I yeah. I just um, going to add a little bit about what Cindy was saying about. I don't know if you guys noticed. First thing she mentioned was the independent decisions. <laughs> That's some of the problems that we were having. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A lot, a lot. Uh, <laughs> we yeah. realize that. <laughs> so I'm thinking this program, this mm-hmm. beautiful academy, what we had, because uh, we learned so much and God is really working. <laughs> so I'm so glad uh, we signed for this and um uh, we definitely God is doing something with every single one of us. I'm sure I'm a hundred percent, even if we already know some of the stuff and we already experiencing with some uh, other couples and things like that. God is definitely using every single one of us to, uh, to get better uh, and, and get ready for what God has for, for this, for this program. And uh, just for our marriage, I think, um, we have a better relationship. Uh, waking up together and going going to sleep together is uh, I recommend it to every everyone that I that I talk to in my church and uh, I don't know, but it seems like God is really putting people in front of me and mm-hmm. for me to testify about what what is going on in our in our marriage and mm-hmm. how we growing spiritually, how we seeking God even more together. Mm-hmm. I- really testifying that it works and it really with the experience that we're going listening to all the testimonies listening to everything generally everything that everybody's experiencing is really helping us a lot times uh cindy says uh she says a few things so quick and we just talk about it right away and, and hey you said this and you heard my feelings and certain things and it's just been helping us so, so much. Mm-hmm. So it works. Excellent. Okay. Herb and Luli back. Christian marriage reboot. Um, I wanted to, um, I love Cindy's laugh. Didn't you love her laugh? <laughs> Cindy is just so full of joy. 
but also uh, having come from a, uh, their blended family and having been through divorce and being a single mother for a long time, she really survived by making independent decisions. It really mm. wasn't optional. Sure. Everything depended on her. So when she and Mario got married, you know, that was that was the way she rolled. Sure. She survived by making being expedient and mm. making the decisions when they mm -hmm. needed to be made. Mm. So this whole idea of making a mutual decision was a huge growth area for them. And uh, just loved hearing them at the end of the Academy making those comments. So what were some of your takeaways? Well, I totally agree with you as far as uh, I think that's a struggle with, with all of us, it, it, whether or not we're coming in as singles or uh, from, from uh, into blended families. Um, uh, we're so really excellent at making independent decisions, but when you become one, uh, the, or when you marry, you, your, your goal for the marriage is to become one person. Well, to do that, you have to make mutual decisions so that you can compromise and work together to become one. That is so difficult to do when you're so good at doing independent decisions. So to automatically stop doing independent decisions, stop doing reluctant decisions is really difficult. And uh, they had to work on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it was great hearing that, you know, the thing about it is I... Herb has often said that when you make a mutual decision, it's a win-win. Yeah, versus a win-loss. Yeah. yeah, and with independent decisions, it's a win-loss, just like you said. Yeah. You are not working as a team. You're really working against each other. You, you automatically disrespect the other person because yeah. they never get a, a chance to be part of the decision. Yep, yeah, right. So what's next? Okay, uh, let's do one more thing. I love the fact that they said that uh, going to bed at the same uh -huh. time was a really difficult thing, but they did it, and it, they recommend it to anybody. And the last, I love the last thing he said about the Academy. He said, it works. <laughs> I love that. Okay, now we can move on to the third uh, uh, video, and that is with um, Tim and, uh, let's see. Pesh? Uh that is, that is the third one is with and Petch, um, out of uh, Old Hickory, uh, Tennessee, uh, the uh, Loop Keys, and uh, they were also went through the academy with us. And and uh, let's play that video. I'm not going first. I we were talking about how it really grounded us as a couple leading. Mm -hmm. We have three kids, middle school and high school, and it's a very, very busy time with very various schedules. And so it's like we're just always on the run and going, typically, um, divide and conquer, typically. And this was like a really grounding for us to get into a rhythm of the parenting together and spiritual discipline together and good conversations sharing and owning your part. And the person not giving feedback, but just you saying it out loud and they hear your heart, safe space to share. It created the space. And I'd say the flexibility too, because it was, it was very hard with, you know, the schedule with our life, but mm -hmm. there was that flexibility built in that, but it just kept us very intentional and aware. So you noticed was really Tim and I's like one-on-one -on -one time was is really stretched thin like what you were describing earlier was just moments of trying to have these fleeting conversations and i was noticing oh there's like four other things i want to talk to tim about i never got to it so it kind of fell down to the bottom of the pile but then it becomes almost like an independent decision yeah. because it's like well we didn't get a chance to talk so it's hurried or rushed or i just did oh. it and i was noticing how much that happens mm -hmm. and that can cause like over yeah. time that can cause but it adds up. And because maybe some of the things weren't that big of a deal, but I can see how that can start to build some kind of resentment or like, oh, well, they did that. So I'll make this decision. And it's not even big things, but just an opportunity to talk it through because you also don't know what that other person even thinks about mm -hmm. some of these smaller decisions because you just can't get around to the conversation. And so creating that intentional time in the morning, like I'm not a morning person, but I'm like, all right, we're going to spend 20 minutes before you go on your work call. So we can have all these like moments creating these times together. So it was what is going on in my marriage where these independent decisions, or maybe you don't get to talk through, I was insulted or hurt, but we didn't have time 
now it's two or three days later. Yes. Um, before I'm going to get to it. And then you feel kind of like, well, why am I going to bring it up? Who remembers what that was about that little snipey back and forth, you know? Um, and so it gave us like a system to even talk about that little snipey, right. what do we call them? Sean, the snippety snips. And so it gave us this process to be like, Hey, there's a snippy there. Let's what's going on. And, and it just, it gave us a good, good, healthy process to talk it through without getting defensive or attacking the other person. Um, so it was just, it just incorporated some really healthy practices and disciplines around that connection. Oh. And it was like, at first I thought like, Oh, is this going to be so prescriptive, but it's really not. It's just a resource and a tool that's available. And it was really like helpful. Cause you're like, Hey, there's a little sheet that they sent out on this. Let me pull this up and let's use that. Right. In the heated emotional moment or feeling, not feeling good. Or I think I definitely want to continue some of these practices because that's, a, it's a discipline, but it, it's, it's, it's working and it was very valuable and helpful. So I, I think we just need to be intentional about it. And it really brought out, highlighted those things for us. So yeah. Okay. We're back. Herb and Luli, <laughs> Mary Tree Boot. Um, you saw just Pesh. You did not get to see your husband, Tim. Uh, as she said, they have three children, all ages. He was at a football game. Well, he was he was listening actually on the the Zoom, uh, uh, but he was driving to his son's football game, a good ways away. Yeah, and so uh, we may be able to show you in the future some of his comments as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, they were a great couple, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the things that I loved, I, I, Pesh is so articulate, and I just think some of the key words she used, it grounded them in parenting, communication, and spiritual disciplines. Don't we all need a little grounding? Don't we all have a tendency to drift? I know I do. And also one of the things she said, which I think as you listen, your one of your biggest concerns is I, it won't be flexible. It's going to be rigid and I just can't work it in or do it. Well, here again, she said she used the word flexibility. Then she used the word awareness. It made us aware of areas that needed attention. Um, and I love to the fact that when we do, when we are not communicating the natural thing to happen is independent decisions. That's just going to happen. But she said what happens is then the independent decisions tend to pile up and add up. And so this gave them intentional times to keep the list of things that need to be talked about as a short list rather than having a long list. And then you've got not only things you need to talk about, but then hurt feelings that have also piled up as well. And so, uh, and I love the other thing she said was, she said it gave them a space to process mm -hmm. uh, without being defensive. They working to really understand where the other one is listening well and working to get reconnected as a team versus just winning or being heard yourself. It really made you want to know what was going on in the other one's heart. And so, yeah. So, well, you know what, what I saw is why it's so, so critical to have scheduled undivided attention time between a husband and wife of two hours because the, they kept talking, she kept talking about the same problem that all of us have, which is we're so busy doing all our things that we're all going in four different directions in a family that we have no time to really be able to communicate with each other. And so she would find that she didn't have the time to, to ask Tim about something and was forced into an independent decision because it needed to be done. And, uh, or if there was a hurt feelings, uh, it never got resolved. And, and, uh, she could see that resentment could build up on that. But if you've got two hours designated each day of undivided attention time where you can talk without the children interfering, uh, you can get work through all those things and keep uh, uh, the record of wrongs to zero. Uh, and so I thought that was pretty critical. But I would say every one of you out there have that issue because we're a busy society, you know, and we're very ambitious. And so it's really, really important to designate that time 
And two hours is not too long. In fact, it's a minimum. It's the amount that you would be spending, you know, if you were trying to get your wife uh, to marry you. You know, you're going to be spending that amount of time. And so it's the same kind of thing that needs to continue into the into the uh, a marriage. Well, and I did appreciate, which you, I want to encourage you. She said they weren't able to do it all. They weren't able to get the two hours in, but they became intentional about that 20 minutes first thing in the morning to get connected and get on the same page and how helpful that was. Okay, what's next? Okay, next uh, we're going to have another video uh, with friends of ours from Ohio, uh, Matt and uh, Tanya Jarecki. And, uh, and they're going to tell us about their experiences with the Academy. So let's listen to them. Okay, you've got 10 minutes. Okay, well, uh, you go. there you go, Matt. On the calendar, very helpful. Honestly, me and Tanya were doing this even before. We, we had a shared calendar. And we in the beginning of the week or the end of the week prior, we plug in everything that we want to do into mm -hmm. the calendar and mm -hmm. then we have automated things like we're going to do family movie night and we're going to do mm -hmm. game night and all this stuff so that way we could just shift it around really easy mm -hmm. I, I found the calendar to be very very helpful integrated the two so we were able to treat mm -hmm. it like one calendar right that's that's good yeah excellent I think too, like the targeted parenting helped us like at least me i'll only speak for me realize how easy it is for us to kind of like lose the kids in the haze of busyness. Like if we're not intentional, the kids getting like focused time with us is one of the first things that drops off to get to see that. And to try to like be a little bit more intentional about making sure they're getting focused time. Um, we recently got a puppy, so we've been taking her on walks and that's been a nice time to like get to just chat and, and spend a little bit more like intentional time with them. It's really helped remind us, you know, when you're, when you're, when you have to get together with people, and talk about stuff you tend to take it a little more seriously <laughs> and uh the meetings did uh, like when we dropped the ball and we kind of like oh we didn't really get that this week the next week we we would you know show up in a bigger way and, and i think that that accountability really helps too yeah i think too having some different tools in our toolbox oh yeah like what, coming out of a situation of like high trauma, what that needs, the tools that are needed for that situation are not necessarily the tools you need for common marriage problems. So I think for us, as we get used to having normal marriage problems, like okay. having some different tools to use has been really, really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're back. And I just think they hit on some different things. I mean, they were the same, but a little bit different. Uh, yeah. They have, they have any children they have. I can't remember. Uh, three, three? The, at least three or four. So this is a family situation uh, and they're dealing with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, uh, Tanya did refer to the fact that there had been trauma in the marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, at one point, we're going to bring them on to the show to let them tell that story, which mm -hmm. is a wonderful story of mm -hmm. redemption. Mm -hmm. But um, they were able, I love the fact that she said, both of them were saying the calendar was very, very helpful. Uh, Herb and I found that. When we don't do the calendar, it, we really move toward, I really move toward independent decisions. That calendar really gets us grounded. And um, then I loved her fact about the targeted parenting, that mm -hmm. they didn't realize how they weren't giving focused attention to their kiddos that and intentional good, time good point, good with point. them and getting, um, I don't know if they're recommending you go get a dog, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> finding, <laughs> finding something that gives you time. It's not like you have to add it in when you're in the car driving to a sport event having attentional conversation versus you're driving, listening to one thing and the kids are in the back doing an iPad or something like that. And then the community time, I love that Tim mm. pointed that out. The community time is accountability, but it is accountability, encouragement, and also inspirational. You get ideas from one another. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot, very flexible in there as is, is, is applying that yeah. accountability. Uh, also, they mentioned uh, the last thing, uh, because we're going to go into closing in just a second, but to finish up here, um, you know, they also said, hey, gave us some great tools, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, to, to help us out in, in a marriage. And so uh, that's another big advantage of the Academy. So I think you've heard from uh, people who've gone through the Academy, uh, how much uh, they, they loved it, and how much it improved their marriage, um, and how much uh, 
effort it takes and time that you need to put into your marriage to make it the great thing that God created. Uh, so um, uh, I think we can go into closing. Um, next week, we're going to have uh, another great show. We're going to uh, try to have uh, some uh, guests that will come on. But at the same time, we want to uh, we want to uh, tell you more about the mutual decision process, which is one of the nine uh, essentials. Uh, we want to tell you more about the value of community groups uh, mm-hmm. uh, in that and, and other things. So uh, tune in to us next week, uh, Thursday. 11 to 12 on Fishbowl Radio Network. Um, It's Facebook Live, uh, and we are really looking forward to seeing you again. Yeah, and we'd love for you to tell your friends about us. Also, if there are comments, we would love your comments. If there is something that you heard today and you thought, I need for I need to unpack that a little bit more. We would love to do that for you. And we're going to start bringing some of these couples on too so they can tell you their stories and their testimonies because each of them has a remarkable story to share as all of us do. It's just that nobody gives us a platform to share that story. So we really want to build that into our time with you where you can hear the different testimonials from all these wonderful couples that have done the Academy. Yeah, we we really want to get across the point that the fact that uh, because of our our lifestyle and who we are uh, and and our sin, we're slowly moving apart. And unless we do something that reinstitutes God's standard, and his nine essentials into our marriage, our marriage is going to slowly fall apart. It may be slower, it may be faster, but it's going to die. And that's not what you want. And so you need to do something and you can do it yourself or you can do it with us. But either way, you really need to do those. And you have to do all nine essentials at the same time, which includes those three, the uh, three time periods with those with the relationships and also the six others where their behaviors like forgiveness and mutual decisions and agape love and and um, uh, renewing of the mind and trauma healing. And all those, they all need to go and make your marriage great again. And just one last thing, when Herb was talking about forgiveness, I cannot encourage myself and each of you, ask for forgiveness. Be quick to ask for forgiveness. Don't dig your heels in and go, well, I'll forgive them if, or I'll forgive them but. No, be quick to ask for forgiveness. When you hurt the other one's heart, it doesn't matter about the reasoning or trying to process, well, that's really, that's their deal. They're just overly sensitive. If we hurt someone, we hurt someone. So let's be quick to ask for forgiveness when we do that. So we cannot wait to see you next week. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. And thank you, Angelo, for amazing production. Okay, go to our website and apply today to join us uh, or email me. Uh, And we've given you that information earlier in the program. Uh, So either email us for more information or go to our website, chrmarriagereboot.org, which is at the top, and and apply and join us uh, for our next session. If they go to the website, can they automatically email you off the website? Uh, Yes. uh Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. You can do that, too. All righty. Have a great week. Great. Thank you.